Yes. Wow. You may have noticed. You may have noticed. Something's a little bit different. Look at all this. Whoa. Look at when I focus and focus. Is this good content? Welcome everyone to the new and improved Steven Inks channel. Brand new camera, brand new resolution, no improvement on skills, talent, or confidence. But we look nice, don't we? Is it in focus? How much is this costing me? I've got a lot to share with you guys today. As a matter of fact, today we're looking at a pen box. I got one to commemorate 1,000 subscribers to this channel and to clearly illustrate how long it takes me to do a video. A gift from my lovely wife. I think she likes me. Uh, and an opportunity to showcase what we've been doing the last two years at Stephen Inks and uh, talking about using fountain pens for drawing. So first, let's look at this case, what it's about, what I like, what I don't like. I like most of the things about it. And afterwards, I would like to explain to you something that I've been trying to do for some time. Um, and this box is just the perfect time uh, to explore. But first, let's look at the box and then we'll come back and talk about what's next. Okay, so this is a box, and uh, I wasn't going to do the whole unboxing thing, but I thought you might want to see how this thing comes packaged, and I had to figure out how am I going to how am I going to do this shot because this box is much bigger than anything I have um, normally been unboxing on this channel. So um, I ended up going with this view of my floor where you can see my beautiful um, carpet, which is almost as grizzled and old as I am, plus my slippers, which say sweet love on the top of them. So that's great. Um, all of these things are exciting for you. I just want you to know how lucky you are to see this extra part of my life. Um, so opening it up, we get, it is packaged in foam, so protected. This little label says timely buys. All right. Um, pulling some styrofoam out, we're gonna get this box and it looks like it's wrapped in some sort of a, a foamy packaging. So hooray for everyone except the environment. Um, and we're gonna pull out, it looks like there's a foam thing on the bottom too. It's heavy. All right. I'll clean that up later. And he never did. Um, pulling off the sides here, it looks like the thing's fully assembled, which is great because I don't want to put this together. Couple pieces of tape. And voila. Okay, so cool. Um, and you can see, see, uh, wooden box, nice little hinge action. It feels very strong and simple. It doesn't have a handle here, but you can use your fingers to open it up. You don't have to, it doesn't get stuck or anything. So this is nice. Drawers come out. The drawers are also, um, I noticed that these handles are not great for grip, grippiness if you have fingers that are larger than a small woodland creature, like a raccoon could get in there real easy. But uh, for me, I'm probably going to open them, just put my fingers on the side there. The drawers slide out, looks like there's two, four, six, eight, ten spaces. And oh, the drawers come right back out, so let me just look at this up close. It's got this nice little velvety texture, which I like. Um, solid wood construction. A little bit of scratch on the back there, but uh, it's on the back is not big of it. That's not that big of a deal. Um, it does have little tracks on the inside where the drawers go in, so the operation is pretty smooth. Um, and that's ooh, 
that's really all there is to it. Uh, it's time to put my pens in it. And uh, which pens are going in the top? Well, I say, since I've got two, 10 spaces, how about my top 10 pens for drawing with? Stay tuned. Now, a couple of caveats to this list. It's not exhaustive because I don't own every pen that there is. There's probably a few favorites that you will not see on this list because I don't own them yet, so I haven't tried them, so I don't know. Um, if you want to include some comments down below for some things you think I should check out for drawing, that would be fantastic. But we are going into this and we're going in hard. As a matter of fact, um, I put some thought into how do I determine what makes a good pen for drawing. And I did something a little bit nerdy, something that uh, teachers tend to do a lot. Um, I made a rubric. A rubric, for those of you who are not familiar, um, is a set of categories that are usually numbered or weighted uh, according to a points value. Um, teachers use it to grade complicated pieces of work, like a student's written work, uh, like an essay format or um, something like an art project, that sort of thing, where you divide it into categories of what's important and you give a point value to each one. So my rubric includes a couple of things which I will uh, explain right now. Category number one is filling mechanism and it's scored from one to four points. Filling mechanism is really important because the way that you get ink into your pen is a convenience factor as well as um, it gives you an idea of how much ink you can get into a pen, a pocket pen being less, a larger pen, a piston filler, or uh, something that uh, can take in a large capacity of ink might be more desirable to some. Uh, for me, the uh, filling mechanism should have enough ink that I can draw for several hours without having to refill my pen, but also the mechanism itself should be detachable so it can be cleaned and lubricated as necessary. Category number two is line weight. Line weight is scored from one to four points. A high scoring line weight will give me options. Reverse writing or tilting the nib for specialized grinds should give me thicker or thinner lines, or even um, a nib with flexible tines will give me many varieties of lines to work with. There's nothing wrong with pens that only give you one line of weight for drawing. However, um, if that line of weight is not appropriate to the amount of detail you wanna put in, that could be a problem, and having other options definitely increases what you can do stylistically with your pen and ink drawings. Number three. The third category is comfort. Comfort is scored from points from one all the way to four points. Um, comfortability is really important if you're gonna use your pen for a very long time. Uncomfortable pens for me are pens that um, are slippery or um, uncomfortable to hold when they get warm, um, or pens that are too large and bulky, have an odd shape, um, or do not post well, things like that. So um, that's category number three, and its importance just has to do with holding the pen for a very long time. Category number four is durability. A durable pen is scored from points from one to four, and a really durable pen uh, is one that does not scratch easily, one that is not likely to chip or break, crack, clog, or leak. Pens that have a tendency to do that will not score high in this category, and uh, pens which um, have already broken on me are automatically gonna get a deduction. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go through these pens, starting with the pen that scored the lowest all the way up to the top. Interestingly enough, the pen, one of the pens that scored near the top is a pen that I have not given a review for yet. I have owned it for some time, but a review for that is coming soon. This is not the review of that pen. This is my top 10 list. You're also gonna notice that even though some pens may have scored lower than others, these are all pens that I love. They are my 10 favorite pens from my collection, and the rubric actually surprised me a little bit because when I ran through the actual qualities of the pens, some of the ones that I thought would score much higher ended up being down 
towards the bottom. So I'll explain the reasoning behind the scores for each one and um, you're free to open up that debate in the comments uh, if you feel like one of your favorite pens got slighted. Let's get to it. Number 10, the Pilot Kakuno. This is a very popular video on my channel when I reviewed the Pilot Kakuno. I think it has something like 14,000 views. It's incredible. And I love the Pilot Kakuno, just to clarify. Some of the reasons why um, it got lower scores than some of these other pens include, from the filling mechanism standpoint, Pilot makes terrible converters. And you may say that that is not the pen's fault that the converters for Pilot are all terrible. That is true. However, it is Pilot's fault that they can't seem to put together enough um, research and development into their converters to make them as good as their pens. The Pilot Con 40, terrible. The Pilot Con 70, terrible. The Pilot Con 50, discontinued, but I think it was terrible. I don't know, I've never owned one. Uh, let me know if you've ever had one of those. Um, essentially, uh, the pen is very hamstrung by its converter. Um, another thing being that being a plastic pen is not as durable. Uh, it probably will crack at some point. Mine has held strong so far uh, through all of the things that it's gone through. Um, the shape can be a little bit uncomfortable, the sort of uh, hexagonal shape of the pen. Um, and uh, my extra fine Pilot Kakuno is only capable of one line weight, and it's a very fine line weight. One of the things that I like about that pen, but that does make it a little less uh, flexible to be used in various situations because um, you must be committed to a style of ultra super fine thin lines, which doesn't match everyone's artistic style. Your own mileage may vary. Number nine, the Twisby Eco. Now you guys probably already know what I'm gonna say to why uh, this pen got the score that it got. Um, durability is definitely a concern with the Eco. Sometimes I wonder why I love this pen so much given that it is one of the only pens I've ever owned where the section has cracked on me and I've had to replace it. To be fair, Twisby does stand behind its pens and offers a great option for replacing the parts if they do become broken, and that has elevated its score even just a little bit. Um, the positives of the Twisby Eco are that you get a great ink capacity. It is a fully removable piston that you can lubricate as needed and clean and give it a deep cleaning. Um, the nibs and the flow are quite great. It being a plastic pen, again, there's that prone uh, to cracking. And uh, even though there uh, are lots of things being said about how, you know, um, we can't expect plastic to last forever, I really haven't had that cracking problem with any of my other plastic pens, maybe one or two very cheap ones that I've owned. So that puts the Twisby Eco, despite being a pen that I love, down towards the bottom. Number eight, the Starliner XL from the Keras Pen Company. This is an unsung hero of the fountain pen world. I haven't heard of anybody doing reviews of this pen. It's really fantastic. Um, durability wise, it's quite uh, strong. It's a metal pen. It is quite comfortable, uh, but it's definitely the comfort is a little bit more on the side of when it's cold temperatures, uh, if you're not someone who has hot hands, because as a metal pen, it does get warm and a little bit slick on the section, which is quite smooth, um, so causing that to lose a few points. It does take standard international converters, so you really have a wide range of things to pull from. Um, the flow is good. It did not come uh, to me with a very good flow. I had to work with the nib a little bit to make it work. Uh, the uh, Cerakote coating around this pen is one of the things that makes it so cool and interesting to hold, uh, but that does take away from its durability because it's prone to scratching. I like to leave mine inside of uh, a little pen sleeve to keep the, uh, the outside from scratching. 
Um, a fantastic pen, however, and one that I'm very glad to have in my collection. In number seven, the Brass Pocket Pen by Delike or Moonman. Um, the ever-shifting name of Delike, Moonman, Majon, I believe they are called now, is um, kind of a joke in the fountain pen world because they um, keep ending up in trouble over their pen designs. And this particular pen is not necessarily a copy, but you'll definitely see some comparisons to the Caveco Lilliput. The shape and the form factor of this pen is slightly different uh, from the Lilliput, and I feel even superior. Um, I like the shape and the size of this pen. Being 100% made of brass, it's definitely very strong, but definitely also very slick in warm temperatures. Um, it flows very well. One of the ways that it falls short, and this is indicative of all pocket pens, is that it has a pretty low ink capacity, um, and the nib, which is quite fun, the one that I have is a bent nib, so it um, can give you different line weights. It tends towards the thicker lines, which is still very fun to use, um, but it does run out of ink quite quickly. So that's one of the uh, negatives, one of the reasons why it's lower down to the, uh, the lower half of this list. At number six, the Hongdian Black Forest. The Hongdian Black Forest is a fantastic pen, um, which I really enjoy using. In fact, I have sort of kept to uh, the nib that I changed out from the one I originally received. Um, Hongdian sells replacement nibs including fine, extra fine, and fude nibs. I took the extra fine nib that I received in the pen originally, and I traded it for a fude nib, and that has given me so many different options when it comes to line weights, something that I really considered when I was scoring this pen. Um, I also found uh, that this pen has um, a lot of different uh, ways that you can hold the pen to keep it comfortable. Uh, for artists, sometimes we hold a little bit further back, and if the pen has any kind of a grip that's um, partitioned or sectioned in any way that could be uncomfortable to hold right on threads or on the, um, on the transition between the section and the body of the pen, it can be a little bit uncomfortable, and that does kind of lose some points for me. But this particular pen is really comfortable to hold just about anywhere on the pen. It posts nicely, um, and it is made of metal, making it pretty strong, although some of the finish on my Black Forest has chipped, which doesn't affect the, effect, the usability of the pen at all, uh, just something to be, uh, to be noted. A really cool pen, especially considering its price. Number five, and the first gold nib pen on this list, the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Now the Sailor Pro Gear Slim um, ended up scoring pretty well on this list. As a matter of fact, um, it was high enough that it tied with the next pen uh, on this list as well. So rather than being number five, it's really number four tied with another pen, uh, which you're gonna find out about later. The Pro Gear Slim has really great uh, line weight and a really nice, comfortable grip. It does have slightly uncomfortable threads uh, to hold if you're moving up and down the body of the pen uh, in order to draw with. And there is a limit to how um, many different kinds of line weights you can get with this nib. It is pretty stiff for a gold nibbed pen. And something that you should consider also is that the Pro Gear Slim is quite short in its form factor. It's not very comfortable to use unless it is posted. Um, Sailor makes one of the best converters that, in my opinion, that you can get. It's completely removable. You can pull it apart, all the parts, and lubricate and clean deeply. So um, I'm really happy whenever I have a Sailor converter in my pen, and um, this is a pen that works really great uh, for almost all drawing applications. Number four, and tied with number five, is the Platinum 3776, the other gold nib pen on this list. 
The 3776 that I own is in a soft, fine nib, which means that the tines will spread if pushed, giving you lots of different line weights to work with. This is one of my favorite pens and it's an absolute workhorse. It works really well on any kind of paper, platinums, trademarked super thin lines, um, dry feeds allow it to uh, be on especially very absorptive paper without causing huge problems like feathering or bleeding through the other side. Um, this is a great pen to have just for sketching, figuring out ideas, um, even taking notes. It's very durable and um, it's used in a lot of different ways uh, without really um, ever being hampered by its design or any of the, the parts that it works with. There are some uncomfortable threads right on the section transition, which they're not that bad, but they exist and they're very um, easy to see and um, just that one spot you might not wanna put your fingers if you're moving up and down. Um, platinum as well makes fantastic converters that uh, you can remove completely and pull apart to clean every little part and have them for a very long time. So um, no complaints there, and the Platinum 3776 is a fantastic pen for drawing. At a surprise number three, the Picasso 916. The Picasso 916 is something that I reviewed over this summer, which was quite a surprise to me. This pen came out of nowhere for me. I had not heard of this brand. I bought it on a whim, but I found that it is in exactly what I had hoped that the Pilot Metropolitan would be. The Pilot Metropolitan is nowhere near this list, by the way. You can see my video about that uh, for more of my opinions on that pen. Um, but if you're looking for an entry level $20, or so a uh, pen that works really well, is strong and durable, um, takes a converter that comes with a free converter, unlike some of the other pens on this list, um, and just has a nice solid metal construction that's comfortable to hold. The Picasso 916 is a fantastic choice. And um, it also scored very high just because um, it does all of the things that a pen should do, and it does it really well. Um, it's not a pen that's very flashy, that's very noticeable, but it just manages to tick a lot of boxes. Strength, line weights, uh, comfortable, and it's durable. So definitely a great one to check out, and that is our number three pen. Number two, at a surprise to no one, Pen BBS 456. Um, I've done two videos reviewing two different Pen BBS 456s. However, I would say that this uh, category could belong to any number of Pen BBS pens whose design I really appreciate and enjoy. The 456, the 308 would be two great examples of that. Um, their nibs and feed sections work flawlessly. The Waverly um, grind is a fantastic thing for artists. It's also quite fantastic if you happen to be left-handed, is what I am told. As a left-handed person, I absolutely love this pen. Uh, tilting the angle of your hand when you're drawing will give you different line weights. Reverse writing gives you a super hair-thin line, uh, which is great for tiny details. You can choose the ink capacity that you want. The 456 is a vacuum filler. If you're interested in cartridge converters, the 308 is also a great pen from Pen BBS. They're built very durably. Um, their parts are interchangeable. If you have different pens, you can pull uh, different nib sections out and change them out. And they actually, the sections actually fit with the bodies too. It's all uh, one big system that's universal across the brand. So. Pen BBS is a fantastic pen to check out. If you don't have one yet and you like to draw with your fountain pens, I don't know what you're waiting for. Our number two, Pen BBS 456. And now we're here with the number one pen of the pens that I own for drawing. And if you own this pen, you will not be surprised that I have chosen it. 
If you do not, and you've been watching my channel for some time, you might be surprised because, as I said before, I have not completed my review of this pen. However, my review is coming soon, and you should expect to see it uh, when the time allows uh, for a really great review, a very thorough review to come through. Um, this pen ticks all the boxes. It has a really great convenient filling system. It's comfortable. It has uh, texture grips to keep your hands where they're supposed to be. It can be held at different points in the pen without uh, causing any problems. Um, and it is a fantastic writer with various line weights possible through reverse writing and through giving uh, medium to light pressure on the nib. This pen is the Muji pen. Uh, the Muji pen is made of, by, I believe, the Muji Stationery Company, which is based in Japan. They have, um, it's basically, I, I believe it's a brand of convenience stores or like th um, low price type stores like uh, where you could buy convenience items. And uh, this is based in Japan. And uh, for some reason, they made a fountain pen. And for some reason, it's awesome. The minimalist design allows you to post the cap without a gap between the ends of the cap and uh, the body of the pen. And when it's capped as well, on the other side, there's no, um, there's no stop gap in between. Um, the section flows perfectly into the body. It's a work of art. It's incredible. Um, I can't wait to show you more with this pen. For now, I'm going to draw with it, but look out for the review of this pen soon. This is my number one pick for drawing with a fountain pen, the Muji pen. The, the inspiration behind this drawing uh, is something that I'm actually going to say towards the end of the video that I thought, huh, that's funny. It's pretty indicative of uh, what this channel is about, um, is that I, I started this channel about two years ago ago just wanting to talk about my favorite fountain pens for drawing because I felt like a lot of people were talking about them for writing but uh, not very much on the art side and I think that fountain pens are a fantastic tool for drawing with um, and it sort of I won't say ended because it's still going on and I, I plan to keep making this content um, it just turned into uh, a lot of this uh, collecting pens for the sake of collecting pens. Um, I still do draw with my pens. I enjoy drawing with fountain pens. That's my primary tool for art these days. Um, but I've also kind of fallen in love with the hobby of just kind of collecting and building a collection of pens. Um, and I'm starting to, to understand that uh, the hobby that I thought I was getting into when I started this channel is actually two hobbies. The hobby of making art with pens and it's just the hobby of pens uh, so I find that my audience ends up being uh, oftentimes people who like to draw with pens but sometimes just people who like pens because that's the other part of this channel so um, anyway just some musings and thoughts um, building this channel has not made me an, an expert in any way on, on art or on pens uh, but it's just sort of made me a participant So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you've 
Got lots of things to talk about in the comments. I can't wait to hear um, what other pens you didn't hear about that you'd like to know my opinions on. I have not tried every pen in the world, uh, but it's on my list. Uh, or if you feel like one of your favorite pens was slighted, um, please let me know in the comments, as well as you can look at my rubric, which has been posted there for you to review, and you can test your own pens and tell me what scores they get uh, based on the criteria that I've outlined in my rubric. I would love to hear how your pens stack up to my measurement system. As always, I'm so happy to be here creating videos for you. I love it when you like and subscribe to my videos and uh, I can't wait to hear the conversation that's coming. And I also can't wait to show you my next video, which will be coming out soon. See you then.